Mark, plenty of success in derbies. We go back to 1982. Gee, that's going back a long time. Rare fly. He was a good horse. He was a good horse, and it is a long time ago, Wes. Yes, it is. Um, trained by Reg Raymond. Um, big strapping colt, chestnut colt. Um, yeah, I was lucky enough to get on him early in his prep and uh, and won a, won a race for him. And he was a good thing beating the Karakata. And he came back as a three-year-old and, and really matured into a beautiful, beautiful colt and, and a lovely horse. And... He won the guineas on the way through to the Derby, and um, yeah, he was a he was a very good horse. That campaign leading up to the Derby was impeccable. He was either winning or finishing second. He was involved in that memorable race for so many, uh, where Twin Spin must have got. I don't yeah, know. You were in yeah. the race. How many lengths in front did he get? I think Twin Spin at, the t- at one stage got about forty or fifty lengths in front. It was amazing. It was amazing. But um, with um, with Rare Fly, he was coming out of the. Uh, I think they had the WA Guineas with the Belmont Guineas on at the time. It was a lead, and and then it was leading into the um, uh, into the uh, Derby in that. But the, this particular race was he was jumping from a mile to twenty two hundred, and I was running third, fourth, or fifth in the race. And when Twin Spin got out as far as what he did, I actually didn't want to really be the one to chase him. I wanted to give the horse as easy as running in the run as I could because his next run was separate in the Derby. And um, anyway, Twin Spin got away from a lot, a whole lot of us. The story wound up, but Twin Spin won the race. I ran second, and uh, I think there was. 12 or 13 runners in the race, and I think 12 of us got suspended for not for not chasing down the leader. So it was um, that was even before Danny Miller was trying this. It's Kenny Bradley rode Twin Spin that day. It was it was quite comical actually to watch. It was uh, if you actually got the replay of the race, it was it was quite a quite a fascinating race. Now, did everyone just fall asleep, or they all had something on Twin Spin? No, no, no. I think everyone fell asleep. The horse had done it beforehand, but it actually hadn't gone to the line like it did on on this particular day. But as I said, I was in the fortunate, unfortunate position where I couldn't be the one to go out and chase it because this horse was leading into the derby. It was his first run up over ground, so I just took the punt and stayed where I was. And um, end of the day, as I couldn't run the other horse down, and I, I, as well as 11 other jockeys, got suspended in the race for not chasing him down. What about memories of the derby? Uh, derby's always been a good race to me. Um, it's been a great race to ride in over the years. Um, I've ridden some quite some good horses in the derby. Uh, with winning and, and not winning, but um, yeah, I've won four derbies, West Australian derbies, and one Australian derby, so it's been a good race to me. Bilaly was one of those. He was a big, strong, gangly-looking uh, grey, uh, heroicity yeah, yeah. grey as well, both by Sherall, but probably, I suppose, when you look at the pair of them, despite the fact they both had a bit of size, they, they, they weren't similar type racehorses. No, no, they weren't. They weren't. Um, that was a very fortunate stage of my career, that was. I just split up with the Laurie Connell set up. Laurie's um, uh, had his dispersal, so I split up from that set up and I, I moved back up to Perth there and I was associated, um, I hooked up with um, with uh, Robert Holmes Accord at the time and also Sirens Celestia and, and I was actually watched Belili win a maiden with a girl riding at Pinjarra one day and I thought, geez, that's a bloody good horse. I'm going to see if I can get me backside on that. And it took me a couple of runs down the track to get on it, but I ended up getting on him. Um, after Elby Smith got beat on him. David Rudland won a race on him and then Elby Smith got on him after that and I think Elby won on him, I'm not really sure, but he got beat on him in the lead up to the Derby and, and I was pretty, um, had a good relationship with Sir Ernest at the time and he wanted me to ride it so I got on, on the horse at that stage and that was my first ride on him actually and he won the Derby and then he went on to be a very, very good horse after that. I do think Belili was probably one of the better horses I've ridden in my career. Um, just through injury, um, uh, curtailed when he, he actually was favourite in a race at in the Underwood Stakes at Caulfield. We took him to Caulfield and he jumped the crossing at the mile there and he actually strained a suspensory um, and that basically curtailed his career but um, he was a super horse. He could win from horse could win from 1200 to he won the he won the St. Ledger at 2800 so that's how good a horse he was. And as far as comparing him and Herosity different type of horses. Um, Belili was like a a big hulk. He was he's a massive big horse where actually heroicity was a like a real thoroughbred. He was a really um, stunning, stunning type of horse, a real athlete. His career w- was brilliant as well, heroicity. Unfortunately, you missed out on the the ride in the BMW. Yeah, I did. I was unfortunate. I actually got one of my suspensions, which I probably had nearly as many as Malcolm Johnson, I think, over the years for one reason or another. Um, I found myself fi- fi- uh, falling foul of the stewards on quite a number of occasions, but. That's basically what happened. Yeah, I was I was going to ride him, and then I got suspended, and Greg Hall rode the horse. But I was still um, very happy for, especially for Trevor. Trevor done a wonderful job with with that horse. He was just um, he done an amazing job to get him where he did. I believe there were still big celebrations. You were in Sydney when he won. Yes, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a great celebration. Yeah, yeah it was good. Um, 
Um, as I said, like um, Trevor done a wonderful job with it, with which what he does he, with his horses these days. You know, he's a he's one of the better trainers I've ever ridden for. Trevor, he's he's a good personal friend and a great trainer. Hot Jules, I suppose on breeding you wouldn't have expected Hot Jules to win a Derby by Bletchley yeah. Park out of an old Spice mare. So there's a bit of staying lines there, obviously, on the dam side. But uh, I think it's fair to say his win was attributed to a magnificent ride. Um, yeah, I think Paul Jordan would tell you that also. Um, there's a bit of history with Hot Jules. He wasn't the easiest horse to ride at all. I actually was in the um, in the setup where the, where Paul and Peter Morley actually bought the horse to syndicate him. I think they paid around about 120 for him. I'm not 100% sure, but around that. And they got me to go to Belmont and ride him one morning track work. And I rode him and I was super impressed with the horse. He's a really nice little horse, but I never ever thought that he'd get out to a, a derby. I thought he'd probably be 12, 1400 metre mm. horse. And that's the impression he gave me. First time I rode him, and then um, Paul, they bought purchased the horse. Paul um, started training the horse, and the horse was in a country environment beforehand. And he come to town. He really didn't handle the city life that much, I don't think. And he turned into a bit of a handful to ride. Um, he he was he wasn't the best horse to ride in a race, but he he was a horse that had a, a lot of untapped um, ability, um, and he probably should have won a lot more races than what he did, except for his unwillingness w- within the race, you know. But as far as the derby goes, I think I was very fortunate in a couple of ways that um, you would have never thought the horse would have run a mile and a half, but mm. he drew barrier 16. I had no option but to go back to last and, and try to get the horse to switch off because the biggest problem with him before, and he'd jump out and over-race and, and actually just undo his chances through the run of the race. Um, that day I said to Paul, I'll just, I'd actually just come back from a three months contract in Mauritius and he was probably one of me first couple of weeks back into, into riding. And... Um, and I just said to Paul, I was just going to jump out and drop him out and just see if try to get him to settle. And that's basically what I did. And I just dropped him out to second last to last. And actually, finally, after about half a mile, I got him off the bit. And he travelled really nice after that. At the 600, I was still back last, second last to last. And then I actually took the punt and just went up along the fence and then come out not that far off the leaders on straightening up. And um, got him to the outside and he really picked up. he basically gone around three quarters and even evens the whole way and sprinted home probably 600. That's all he's done. And that type of horse on the track could sprint really quick. And, and, and when he did switch off in the race, that was basically the key to it. You know? It's interesting. You, you talk about Hot Jules, the unpredictable nature of the horse. And we go back yep. and look at Rare Fly, Belili, Heroicity, all different sort of horses. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. And, yep. and yet there's probably no rhyme or reason when asking, what's it take to win a derby? Because each race is different. Each oh, horse very is different. True. Yeah, yeah. Just it's basically the way the races run. The, the whole fields are different, mate. All those four horses are totally different horses. You know, um, I think Rare Fly was probably um, the best three-year-old we had in Perth at that time, and I think he was just too good for those horses. Well, he did they fi- actually they he defeated um, defeated Grosvenor that year, Gee. and Grosvenor just run second or third in the Cox Plate. So he he was just a he was a super athlete. The horse he he was placed behind Kingston Town. Yeah, yeah, he's run after the derby run in the um, Kingston, what is now the Kingston Town, I'm not sure what they called it then. Had, 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 had a few different names. Had, yeah, he's had quite a number of names. Um, and he would have, he actually hit the front on straightening and then Kingston Town and getting closer, just got down the outside the last three quarters of furlong and got past him. What are your memories so of that race? So he's a very high, high quality horse. Eh? What are your memories of that race? Oh, great race, yeah, yeah. The lead up to the race um, was fantastic because Tommy Smith used to, used to keep all these horses at... Um, my old boss is Kevin Williams' stables, where Fred Kersley is now. Um, that's where I was apprenticed at, at that place, when Rod Evans um, actually owned the place. Um, so I used to go around quite a bit and have a look at Kingston Town because I was always in and out those stables anyway. And uh, yeah, he was a wonderful horse, and the whole build up to the race and all that it was it was fantastic. And actually, be in the race and and um, like hit the front of furlong out. It was it was quite an incredible feeling. I realise it's been a changing landscape. Being at the time that I was only. 22, I think, you know, so it was a great thrill. Oh, it would mm. have been. But you, we go back, Cess, and we have a look at some of the horses from back then. You've only got to look at the records, some of the jockeys that were going around yeah, back yeah, then true, as well. True. But the horses, we, we seem to be able to attract the, the horses from TJ Smith, Bart Cummings, Colin Hayes, the Murphys. There was just so many good top-line yes, horses that arrived. True, true. We had Vo Rogue and Better Loosen Up here yeah. as well. I think, I think the situation with the... Um, now the carnivals that they have around Australia, that's made the big difference, big, big impact to Perth. Um, we used to, in those days, like, um, well, it was, we had the first $100,000, you know, Perth Cup. That was a long, long time ago, like 74, I think. 
And in those days, just not long after that, they started bringing those type of horses over because we had a great stake money in that. But now with the carnivals around Australia the way they are, they're just set up where once they finish in, in Melbourne, they're looking at the like what's coming up now, the um, you know the uh, Sydney Carnival and that type of stuff. So they're not really interested in bringing the bread of horses here at the moment until they... Well, I, I can't even say about the stake money because stake money is good in those couple of races we've got. So mm. it's just the way the... Um, the, the carnivals are set up and through 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 the uh, turf clubs now that it's not really that attractable for those horses to come here. Seems like we really need national authority to get things back in order. Well, that's your caper, where's not mine? <laughs> I only work for ND Parnham, that's all I do, mate. I go to work around the corner, come home, sit, and sit in this office. What about the, the derby on Boxing Day? Um, oh, I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. It was... Uh, the whole carnival then was it was totally different, you know. It's a totally different environment. Racing's totally changed, so we had to ch- go with it, go with the time. So it's never going to get back to that. But that that day, Boxing Day, was just a fantastic day, you know. They had, I think, you had the Caracatta Plate mm. on the same day. Yeah, it was the whole carnival spread out over about six or eight weeks, I think, and it was a wonderful carnival in those days. But that's never going to come back. What's your most memorable derby? Um, probably Heroicity. Yeah, yeah. What was um, that? Well, I just think that he was, I think I rode him very well. That was one thing. And um, not the West Australian Derby, the Australian Derby. I think yeah. that was the most memorable for me because um, I be- got beaten a couple of times in the Australian Derby and I was always wanted to win one. And, and winning one on that horse, it actually, he'd, he'd actually um, won the West Australian Derby then come back and won the Australian Derby. And uh, I think that was when he came off that, that um, trip to Sydney. And uh, yeah, so it was, that was probably the most memorable one. It was amazing talking to Trevor Andrews, uh, and Trevor had only basically been training for a, a year or two. Yeah, he was another one that I helped out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did he tell well, you that? He, he did, he told oh, me that, good. yes. He caught, of course he did. You know, he had <laughs> Natasha early, to, early yeah, on and, yeah. and Harold Wissity. What a way to start your training career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he was, and he Mark was very Sisti. fortunate. Oh, not only me, I was just a little cog in the wheel, that's all. But. Um, yeah, it was good to help Trevor. He's, as I said, he's a great guy. He's a very, very talented, talented horseman. We were mates when we were kids, um, and then when I come back to Singapore to ride for um, for Laurie, Laurie Connell up at Bedford Dole, Trevor was working for Tommy Smith, and he came over and started working with us up there. And he was one of the foremans up there. And he he's he's changed from the time he left here as a kid and went to Tommy Smith, and then he come back over and worked for us up at Laurie's place. Um, amazing, amazing difference. The horsemanship that he that he acquired working for Tommy, and then what he's acquired over the years, he's, he's a great horseman.